Thanks for clicking. The Toronto Regional Real Estate Board has released its sales data for the month of October, showing an increase in market activity on the Bank of Canada's interest rate cuts. I was right. You were. But, as we'll see today, while the Toronto market is showing some early signs, tentative signs though they may be, of responding to the Bank of Canada's interest rate cuts, the condo market is showing real signs of a downturn, with the Financial Post recently painting a very grim picture, calling it a market meltdown. The article in question highlights not only the problems facing the Toronto condo market, but also offers some solutions for those buying condos that aren't worth the purchase price. Hey, Bill, I'll try to help you, all right? God bless you, Paul. Okay. I appreciate it. God bless you. Always okay. So what I want to do today is go over Toronto's real estate data for the month of October, take a look at some of the stresses occurring in the condo market, and then discuss some implications. As we'll see today, there is a lot of ongoing uncertainty in the GTA condo market, but I am going to be releasing an interview with GTA lawyer Mark Morris who is seeing things firsthand and is going to offer a much deeper analysis as to what's going on in the market. Click like and subscribe if you want to get that update, but for now, let's get into this data. Under the data, first up, the benchmark price. The benchmark price, if you remember, that's the price of a home that represents the most popular set of features, and that was down in October. The benchmark in September was $1,068,700, and that fell about 8K to $1,060,300. So the benchmark is down about 8K from last month, and down about $40,000 from October of 2023. You're gonna miss out. With that said, the average price was up. The average price in September was $1,107,000, and that jumped about 28K to $1,135,200. So the average price up about 28K from last month, and still up about 10K from this point in time last year. And the median price was up as well. The median, that's where half as many homes that are sold are sold over that price, and half as many are sold under that price. The median price in September was 950K and was up 10K to 960,000 in October. So a 10K increase in one month's time, but still about $1,000 higher than it was in October of 2023. Next, the sales to list price ratio, which measures by how much over or under asking a home sells. So if a home is listed at 100K and sells for 95, the SLPR would be 95. Toronto's SLPR was 99 in September and remained at 99 in October. So on average, homes are selling for 1% under asking price. And finally, the months of inventory measurement, the MOI, which measures if no more homes came to the market, how long would it take for Toronto to completely run out of homes for sale? September's MOI was sitting at 3.4, and that actually dropped down to 3.3 in October. So, Toronto has relatively less inventory available on the market, though as we'll see, they still have an awful lot of inventory. So, we've got the benchmark price down 8k, the average price up 28,000, the median price up 10,000, homes are still selling for under asking price, and we have relatively less inventory sitting on the market. With all of that said, the real story in October was the sales numbers, which jumped 43% from this point in time last year, and up 33% from this point in time last month. And that's a clear movement from the trend. That's a big increase from September to October, much more than we would have expected. As such, I think it's definitely possible that increase is due to the Bank of Canada cutting rates. Now it begins. With that said, let's keep in mind that this was a movement from very, very low sales numbers to begin with. Sales are still 20% below the 10-year average for the month of October, and the third lowest that they've been in October for the past 10 years right behind 2022 and 2023, both correction years. So yes, some buyers responded to the Bank of Canada's rate cuts, but let's try to keep some perspective and nuance. Nope. Okay, but for the rest of us, let's try to keep some perspective and nuance. Sales are up, but by no means is it going gangbusters. Sales are up, but not even close to being back to normal. Further, let's also remember that there's an awful lot of inventory still sitting on the Toronto market with the active listings available, the highest it's been for the past 10 Octobers, meaning that buyers still have a lot of buying power heading into the market. Meaning, house inspections, finance conditions, if your realtor does not want to protect your financial interests, then get a better realtor. Well, f you too, you so, all in all, at least in October, we are seeing an increase in activity in the Toronto market due in large part to the Bank of Canada's rate cuts. With that said, although there is more activity, 
We are seeing some big stresses in Toronto's market, as mentioned earlier. One quick note before getting into the meat of the article, I wanted to mention one interesting or concerning part of the article, depending on who you are. As we've discussed before on this channel, one of the big problems with Toronto's condo market right now is that, depending on when that new construction condo was purchased, it's quite possible that it's no longer worth the purchase price that was agreed to a few years back. That's impossible! And this can become a big problem for financing. Let's say you agreed to purchase the condo for $100,000, and the bank agreed to finance it with 20% down. However, despite the guarantees from the financial wizardry that is the real estate industry, let's say that the price of real estate did not increase forever ad infinitum without consequence, and the condo only appraised at $80,000. Under this situation, the bank is only going to finance 80% of that appraisal, meaning the bank will only give you a loan for $64,000. So, while you had thought you were going to be putting $20,000 down, now it's required that you put $36,000 down. Unless, that is, says the article, you go with RBC, which, says the article, locks in the value of the purchase price no matter what the eventual truth is, meaning RBC will fund the mortgage regardless of the value that comes back on appraisal. So, if it appraises at 50000 and you need 80000 according to this article at least, RBC will still loan that 80000 I see nothing! I know nothing! So, yeah, according to the article at least, if you are one of those buyers of those condos that have come to completion that are not worth the purchase price, RBC has your back. Which is definitely good news for those buyers, as long as they don't mind overpaying for their condos. But, on the other hand, for the rest of us... What would you say you do here? Well, look. I did reach out to RBC's media department as they do not deal with mortgage brokers to find out more about this program and confirm its existence as it's not listed on RBC's website and have not yet received a response back. Regardless, now that we know the potential solution, well-defined and future-focused though it may be, what exactly is the problem? Well, the long and the short of it is too much supply. Too many condo completions coming to the market without enough buyers. With the article in question, noting that the fundamentals of the condo market are about as strong as Amazon stock during the dot-com bust. And just to put that into context, take a look at the Amazon stock during the dot-com bust, losing the majority of its value within a few years. Though I don't think the article meant to be quite so hyperbolic, you get the idea. And the reason, of course, that there's not enough demand is that there's just too much supply. With a 38% increase in new condo listings, record completions ahead going into 2026, meeting even more supply coming, diving rents, supply coming from panic sellers, etc. Everything is fine. So people ordered a condo a few years back, it's now time to buy those condos, but A, either the condo is no longer worth what the purchase price was a few years back, or B, buyers can no longer afford or can no longer qualify for the mortgage for that condo, as interest rates did not stay at 0% forever. That is shocking. As such, more and more of these condo completions are just not being bought, with more and more buyers telling the condo developer to just keep their deposit and try suing. And obviously, this creates more of a glut of inventory, putting downward pressure on prices. And when downward pressure continues to be put on prices, those who already have condos do not sell them. Instead, they try their hand at the rental market, and now we're seeing a 46% increase in the number of condos for rent. So, lower condo prices put downward pressure on rent, and then downward pressure on rent means lower condo prices, as they're less enticing for investors. And on and on it goes. And finally, mentions the article, all of this is happening as the government is rapidly scaling back its immigration plans. And, with Toronto's condo market being heavily tentative by immigrants, that's definitely not a good sign for demand over the next few years. So, lots of supply, plummeting demand, we're seeing prices drop, with the average price of a Toronto condo down by about $20,000 since last year. With all of that said, the Globe and Mail was quick to note that Toronto's condo problems could very well be short-lived, as condo completions will begin to fall dramatically over the coming years, which could in fact be the case. Condo sales, pre-construction condo sales are plummeting, and as such, new condo construction is plummeting as well. But then again, as mentioned, Canada is also cutting immigration. So we're going to have less supply in a few years, but we could also very well have less demand. 
especially at current price points. Nope, it has nothing to do with anything. So in summary, the Toronto market did see an uptick in demand in October, based probably in large part on those cuts coming from the Bank of Canada. With that said, the Toronto market still isn't even close to coming back to normal, and we have a large amount of active listings sitting on the market, while stress in the condo market grows. We will continue to track Toronto's real estate market on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, thanks so much for watching.